In this lesson, we'll take a look at transformations of power functions, and the example we we'll use in this page is the quartic function, f of x equals x to the fourth. And we have listed several transformations here, and we're going to use those to get the equation of this new curve and then graph the new curve. And what's actually graphed here is the, uh, the regular x to the fourth quartic function. And I have a small table of values here, and if I evaluate negative 3 to the fourth, you get 81, which would be the uh, negative 3, 81 point up there. Uh, negative 1 to the power of 4 is 1. 0 to the power of 4 is 0. 1 to the power of 4 is 1. And 3 to the fourth is 81 again. Well, 3 to the fourth is 81. Negative 3 raised to the power of 4 is also 81. And so I plotted all those points over here. I've actually I've plotted a couple of extra points. I didn't include the uh, 216 and the negative 216 in the table for reasons of room. But those two points are actually graphed on the graph as well. Now, we're, at, we're told that we have a vertical stretch factor of 1 half. So that means that the whole function is multiplied by a half. The y values are half the size, and we'll get into that in the tables in a moment. The horizontal compression of factor 3 means that all the x values are divided by 3 or multiplied by a third. So the graph is compressed in this direction by a factor of a third. And so it's only a third the size. The horizontal translation moves the graph 5 units left, and a vertical translation moves it 6 units down. Now our new equation would look like this. So there's the vertical stretch of a half. The y value is multiplied by a half, so the whole function gets multiplied by a half. You do stretches and compressions first, so I'm not actually multiplied by 1 half the negative 6, because you do the stretches and compressions first. If I multiplied the negative 6 by a half, then I, I wouldn't get a translation 6 units down, I'd get a translation of 3 units down. The horizontal compression of factor 3 means that the 3 uh, is multiplied by the expression with the x. Um, it's actually the, it looks the opposite of what it's supposed to be. Uh, if the x values are divided by 3, the reason there's a 3 here is in order to get the same y value, you need to multiply the x's by 3. That's why it looks like it's opposite. But we're, we're actually, a horizontal compression divides x by 3. So in, our, in the equation, to end up with the same y value, you need to multiply all the expressions by 3. The horizontal translation moves the graph 5 units left. So if I move everything 5 left, I'm actually subtracting 5 from all the x's. And so in the equation, you actually have to, in order to end up with the same y values, you have to compensate for that by adding 5 to the x's. The translation moves the vertical translation moves the graph 6 units down, so we subtract 6 from the whole function. And if I were to actually have the 6 over here with a g of x or y, it would actually have the same rule as the um, 5 units left, we put a plus 5, it looks opposite. So 6 units down, there's a minus 6 in the end of the function. Now, I will handle the vertical stretch of a half and the horizontal compression of factor 3 first. And so, in this table, what I'm actually doing is the vertical stretch of a half means that all the y's are multiplied by a half. And so that's why 81, for example, becomes 40.5. Now the horizontal compression of factor 3 means that I've taken all the x's and I have divided them by 3. So for example, negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. Uh, negative 1 divided by 3 is negative a third, or I'll round to one decimal place, 0 0.3. My next table and last table handles the two translations. A horizontal translation of uh, 5 units to the left means that all the uh, x's, I'm moving to the 5 to the left, so I'm going to subtract 5 from all the x's. So for example, uh, this negative 1 subtract 5 is negative 6. And the same with all the rest of the x's. The vertical translation moves the graph 6 down, so we subtract 6 from all the y's. So for example, this y is 0, minus 6 would be negative 6. 40.5 minus 6 is 34.5. And so that's how we use the table to take us from the original function to the, the new one. Now I'm going to plot these points. So negative 6, 34 and a half, negative 5.3, negative 5.5, and we'll graph all of those points. 
and then we'll join them with a smooth curve and there's our new function so that's how you can use transformations to graph any function as long as you have a, a graph or a, make up a table for the original function you can use the transformations to transform the table into the table of values for the new function and of course if I take if I took this new function and put negative 6 in place of x I would get 34 and a half for y if I put negative 5.3 in for x I would get negative 5.5 etc now in the second and last page here is just a, a generalization of where you look in the equation for all the stretches and translations and compressions etc and so this is in general what any power function would look like notice it's x to the power of n so we'll call it an nth degree power function now the constant multiplied by the whole function a refers to some real number in front of all of this that's the vertical stretch factor or vertical compression factor if there's if the a value is greater than one we call it a vertical stretch if a is between zero and one we call it a vertical compression and of course if a was negative there'd also be a reflection in the x-axis the constant inside this set of brackets inside the power bracket uh, that tells you what the horizontal stretch or compression is and it's a horizontal compression if that number is greater than one like the three in the example on the previous page it's a horizontal stretch it makes things wider a horizontal stretch if k is a a constant between zero and one like a half or three quarters or something like that the value on the end here that i'm calling c that's the vertical translation it moves it up or down depending on the sign of c has the same sign as c so it says plus 5, it moves it up 5. It says minus 10, it moves it down 10. And this value here, the d value, is the horizontal translation. Um, it always seems to be the opposite, and that's because the fact that this is with the x. Uh, the vertical translation would be opposite or seem opposite as well if we wrote it over here with the f of x value or the y value. So it says x minus d, it actually moves it whatever d is, right or left, again, depending upon the sign of d. Now, when n is even, when the uh, degree is even, the graph has a vertex at dc, like the example on the previous page. Okay, So dc, and this isn't restricted just to parabolas, to second degree functions. It would be true of a quartic function, or a power of 6 function, or a power of 8 function. There's a vertex at the point d comma c and the axis symmetry would be d. If we went back to the example on the previous page, the vertex is right here at actually negative 5, negative 6. The axis symmetry would be this vertical line right here. If the uh, leading coefficient is greater than 0, the graph opens up as it did in the last page, and that point is a local minimum as it was in the last page. The range would be y is greater than or equal to the value of c. So for example, if we go back to the example on the previous page and take a look at it, this point was the point negative 6. So if I were to write out the range for this particular graph, the range would be all real numbers and this does keep on going there actually are arrows there y is contained in the set of real numbers such that y is greater than or equal to negative six negative six is that d value in the end or the y coordinate of that vertex point so back over to our second page one more time now if the leading coefficient is negative then the graph opens downward and the DC point would be a local maximum point. And if it's a local maximum point, it goes down forever, but there's a highest point. And so that is actually the highest point. So there's the highest Y value. And so the range would be the entire set of real numbers with the restriction that Y is less than or equal to whatever that Y value is that we're calling C. And that's the end of the lesson.